IC20. Encyclopedia. Aren't we all looking for it? Aren't we all looking for it? Part A. My adventure away from it. In the beginning, there was only it. It was a home and family of love. Quote, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John 1 1. End of quote. How it all started. I was young when I left my family home, although I don't remember exactly why, for we had it all. In this unit, which foundation was just love and peace, and nobody had any intention to become old, for that what we called it kept us young. We all lived forever. There was something to it, having it all. However, I had this urge to experience something different, but I didn't want to go into any discussion, for it would have made me stay. So, I sneaked out, or better said, I ran away from it, on the current of light and sound. Without any notice, I left, and knew when I would return, and to return, that was a given, for my home and family was really it, I could not bring anything back with me, not even a memory of the things I would explore away from it. You need to understand, in my family, we are all in tune with it, and you cannot hide anything, for they would even read your thoughts. So, I had to do this quick. For sure they knew what I had planned, and I wanted to avoid the talk. It creating the creation. I wanted to leave, but where to? as everything was only it. There was nothing else. I was going into the nothingness. I was confused. There was nothing. There was nothing away from it. This was frustrating, and within seconds, because I had it in me, I found a solution, for I didn't want to give up that early in the game. I knew I had it, and inside of it, incredible powers. I invented everything which was not possible in the place where it only existed. Yes, something that couldn't exist in my hometown, for it was just pure and clean. This is actually very smart, I thought, to create something which I definitely could not take back with me to it. There wouldn't be any evidence that I had even left it. To make it all look more mysterious, I gave a name to myself, Soul, for in the realm I came from, nothing and nobody had a name. It just was. It creating the universal mind. With it, which was within me, I created an energy which I called ether, and with this I created that which I call the universal mind. You also know me as Kalimabanko, the one with the many faces. I also sustained it with my energy, for without it, it couldn't exist. It was a world of an endless invisible energy, thinking, creating, and traveling wherever it wanted. It was also a source of communication, which I needed anyway in the new world. Through the ether, I would be communicating with that world as the director. This was fascinating, as there was now something different to experience other than the things at home, where everything was just it. I had created a world with opposites, where I could experience the two sides within everything. Now I felt different, as there was something to compare to, 
which was also not possible from where I came from. It had no opposite. It just was. It is not that I want to complain, for at home it was always great. There was so much peace and everything was about love, never arguments. We all just lived in a state of bliss and contentment. And that's really it. Me, I just had to experience something different than it. I realized I had also created change and time, which didn't exist either in my home. It was consistent. And we had all the time in the world, as time even didn't exist. Here I was the creator of all things that couldn't exist at home. And when I would return to it, nobody would even know what had happened. Actually, they were not worried, for they had it, which kept them at peace. I would return without evidence. I looked at all the things that were possible in my new adventure, for inside this universal mind I stored everything that you can imagine. Everything that possibly could and happened there, but it was not quite it. It creating the environments. I felt I needed to be even more real other than just thoughts and possibilities, which I called the causal world. As I had all the materials possible to make it more real, I projected the worlds I had in this universal mind to a more dense world and created the astral world and then the physical world. A world where I could touch, taste, feel, smell and even hear and see. A world where I could communicate with everything. It was a great invention, where it inside of me was also inside everything in this universal mind. But also it was in everything created and projected outside, as nothing could exist without it. With the energy of ether, I created four more dimensions or energies. The energy of earth, called solids, to give form and shape to all in the more dense energy world. Then I created the energy of air, called gases, which I use to let everything breathe. This was like the heartbeat of everything everything would be able to contract and expand. The energy of fire called heat I created to make everything constantly move in order that everything would have an experience of its own. The energy water called liquids was meant to become the creative force for adaptability and to make sure new things would keep on coming. To make sure this would happen, I gave the energy of Earth a double purpose. It would be the material substance, but also in charge of the recycling of all things in the new world. I had to get used to the thought that everything had a lifespan and that things needed to die. The stage was set, but now I needed actors. It creating the inhabitants. As I had inside of this universal mind all possible characters, I decided to project all of them from the inside and gave them form on the outside. In a flash, I could see them on the outside in the form of vegetation, animals and of course humans. It was unbelievable to see what I did with that which was inside of me. With it, I could do anything. Getting back to the actors occupying the new world, I came up with the most fascinating creatures. Although their essence was the same, as it was still the core of everything and everybody, 
they were created with a split personality, because they as well had the duality within them. These were now my actors, which I could play with in this adventure. I was impressed with myself and still amazed that I what I could do with it. Hiding it all as a secret treasure. Before I started to play, I realized that I had forgotten something. I had to make sure that all of them wouldn't remember it, otherwise they might escape and return home. I couldn't run a theater without actors. On the other hand, I didn't want that all actors I had created would forget that they were it in essence and would remind them about it when I saw fit. So, I projected myself as well as a guide, but in disguise. I disguised myself so well that nobody could recognize me. I could not make this guide too obvious, otherwise it would attract all the actors to it and would still lose my players. I knew how attractive it was. The image of the guide would be there only when I, as the guide, thought that someone needed to be reminded about it. Playing with it all. Like a child, I started to play with all these individual actors and characters and created endless scenarios and was able to play with millions of them simultaneously. I knew it was an unreal play, but fun. I worked with the memory of my real power and knowledge and was content and at peace as long as I stayed observing my creation. It was a magical and mystical adventure, and all the scenarios I created in the beginning was about experiencing me as it through all these characters and scenarios. I kept on mixing and changing all the characters and scenarios and played with them in the past, the moment and the future. It was fascinating, especially when they all started to continue playing on their own. I realized that every action would have a reaction and chain reaction. It felt limited compared being it, but they had access to the universal mind and were able to have a harmonious life as they had endless ways to assist themselves. They knew all that was possible in creation. This did satisfy me and I stopped worrying. Losing it while playing. After a while, I changed my strategy of adventure and I decided to concentrate on one character only and giving it a mind on its own. I kept on involving this one character in an interesting scenario and slowly started to identify with it and the world around it. I could even taste and smell the things it was tasting and smelling. I tried another challenge, to not let this character have access to the powers and possibilities of the universal mind and see what it would do. The characters in the scenarios before had had it easy as they had had access to the universal mind. This character would be blinded by the conditioning of itself and by having limitations. What would it do without a memory of the universal inheritance? I was excited to see what the character would do. I decided to work more with the energy force of repetition, which I had used to train my actors to adapt to new scenarios, but this time it would become one of the traps for my one character. Before the characters and scenarios were constantly changing, but this time I thought through letting the character repeat things and forming habits, it would be more challenging 
to see how it would free itself. I let the character experience the most incredible adventures, but as all the adventures were bound to time, with each new scenario an end came. I created the strangest endings, but was not completely satisfied with what had happened in the script before, and also I was not completely satisfied how it had ended. So. I gave the character constantly new scripts and got so involved creating the perfect script that I must have gone mad or blind. After a while I became unhappy, not content and struggled. Seemingly I had lost it, but was looking for it in my play. Actually. I even didn't realize that I had lost it, and was not even realizing that I was looking for it. I even forgot that there was a guide. All my life I would be searching for it, in everything and everybody, in every corner of the world, and in every place in my mind. Something had happened, but I was not sure what. Aren't we all looking for it? Part B. Looking for it. Lost and searching for it. Quote, you will seek me and find me when you seek me will all your heart. Jeremiah 29, 13. Looking for it in my family. I found myself being part of a family, received a real name so everybody knew who I was, and thought, this is it. I felt protected and taken care of, but slowly things changed. There were many arguments and my mother tried to mold me in her image, but this was confusing, as she didn't like the person she was herself. My father was the opposite. He absolutely didn't want that I became like him. I grew up with these two extremes, one controlling me, the other letting me do as I wanted. In the beginning I felt I was their treasure, which had it, something that seemingly they didn't have anymore. Later I felt more a nuisance. My friend Charlie didn't have it as easy as well. His mom thought he didn't have it at all, and she was always behind him, saying that he couldn't get it together. His dad, however, thought that he had it, which he didn't have anymore, and lived his life through him. He was drilling Charlie to become a professional athlete. Compared to others, we didn't have it bad at all. Some parents didn't want to deal with their children, as they had completely lost it. Some were on drugs, others on alcohol, and not to forget all the beatings they got. Other parents were never at home. They were busy taking care of the future. On the other hand, I also knew children who seemingly had it all, but they made themselves unhappy. What am I doing here? Downfall in the negative passions. Growing up, I had many fears. I remembered my fears for heights, darkness, snakes, dragons, and for sure there had been more. Thinking that when I overcame them, that that would be it. Being free from them. I tried at one point in my life to jump from cliffs, but every time I had conquered that height, there was something higher to jump from. And every time that fear had to be conquered again. This game could go on forever and questioned myself if I ever would overcome it. Anger was something I didn't like at all. 
as it destroyed so much, but no matter what I did, I could not get rid of that emotion. Maybe I was just angry that I had lost it. Somewhere I had lost the magic and playfulness in life. I became too serious, rigid and stubborn and got involved in a play far away from it. I started to lust after things in this world in the most strange ways like lusting after taste, money, name and even self-righteousness. Without realizing, I had not only attached myself to the uncountable things I liked, the things I had thought that had it or would bring it, but also attached myself to the things I didn't like or even hated. My heart was ruled by the sense organs and on top of the things I liked or hated, emotions were connected to them. How many times I had come with the solution which created another attachment. At times I had seen the trick and ran away from them finding myself getting attached to something or something else. It was hopeless, but I kept on looking away anyway for it in the things belonging to the mortal world. I knew I had a judgment or opinion to everything and tried to control my mind, but even walking in the street or driving in my car, all these judgments went faster out than I could control them. It was my opinion. Impossible, especially realizing that my mind even would judge while being asleep. The more I tried to control, the more I had come to the conclusion that life, nature, my daily needs and my conditionings were controlling me. I felt like living on quicksand and tried to hold on to everything to give me some security and control. Then the times came that I felt trapped by the things I had gathered and gave all away, but in no time other things took their place. Where could I find it that would bring security? Looking for it in love. Without realizing that I had lost it, I started looking for that real love in the world. I loved my parents, but when they argued with each other, I had my doubts they had that they had it. At times I didn't felt loved by them, especially when they screamed, overpowered and criticized me, and then I really lost it. I remembered when my first toy broke, which broke my heart, and the pains I had for days and nights when my friends said ugly things about me. I didn't feel loved by anyone, especially at school, where I was just a number. And when I didn't get good grades, they told me that I didn't have it in me. I was confused. Was it only for those with good grades and being number one? But they didn't have it either, as they were not satisfied as well. I thought they had it but were also still looking for it. I experienced this later myself when I stood in the limelight by being a good athlete. I thought that I had it too, but couldn't keep up with the image and the pressure and figured that this was it not either. Then the time came having my first young love affair and I really thought that I had found it. But I don't want to think back on the pain that tore me apart when it was over. So I looked for it in a safer place. My bike, my motorbike and later my car. But there it left me too. My bike got stolen. I had an accident with my motorbike and my car cost me a fortune in repairs. I thought I had learned my lessons 
but kept on looking anyway for it, but in other relationships, places and professions. But every time I was disappointed. I questioned if it really existed, and to protect myself I closed off my heart. Looking at others who did the same, I found out that that was not the solution either. I saw others getting hard on taking things too much at heart. In those days I didn't realize them having problems with their heart to the extent having a heart attack, that this was connected. I knew I would not find it in these love relationships, but continued anyway. Looking for it, traveling. I traveled to so many places looking for it, but everywhere there was something missing, because I lost that initial feeling soon after I arrived. I was looking for the perfect place, but couldn't find it. I saw others always having their vacation at the same destination and thought that they had found it. But hearing them complaining, I realized that they didn't have found it either. Were they really content where they went to each time? Or was it the fear of the unknown and rather played it safe? I realized that there were three groups of people in the world which reflected in their home life, business and vacation. The first one was never content and always running from one to the next place. The second group stayed where they were and kept on complaining about everything. The third group was more or less content and made the best out of each situation, but were in their ways still looking for it. I traveled in my mind to so many places, but never found it. Or when I thought that I had found it, I could not stay or hold on to it. I saw others trying it with drugs and unable to stay there where they thought it was. Their health went down or they ran into financial trouble and they couldn't function in life anymore. So that was it not either. Looking for it in special things to happen. I looked for special things to happen in my life and hoped that this would bring it, which I was looking for. Some people were so lucky as they became rich and famous, artists, musicians and businessmen who had made it. I was hoping that something like this would happen to me. I felt deprived, but getting close with some of these people who in my eyes had achieved it, I could see that they didn't have it as they were struggling with the most basic things in life. However, I was still having this feeling that something needed to come, but I didn't know what it could be. Looking for it in sports. Running and getting that high, which some people call the zone, thinking that this was it, was an illusion because I was unable to run all day long to keep up with it. I ran, I jumped and I threw, and although I sensed it, I was disappointed on many occasions when I had injuries and couldn't get my high. For a while I thought it would be there, breaking a record, but that satisfied feeling was soon gone. And there were each time, there was each time another record to break. I tried it with every type of sport, but it seemed to be a game of hide and seek. Then it was there, the next moment or day, it was gone. I remembered my hours of training in tennis, trying to hit the same ball two times, thinking that achieving this would bring it. I, like many others, 
while looking for the break. Like waiting to break through and to be the best, but it never came. By those who became the best, those who I thought that had made it, they had it only for a little while. I had been thinking about taking sport drugs because I thought that they had it, but my experience with alcohol even didn't work out. Looking closer at the matter and all the problems connected to these habits, I had to admit that this was not it. Then there were those who didn't play sports but played this dream, but played their dream out through their favorite athlete or team. As spectators or TV viewers, they were outliving those sensations as if they were the athlete themselves. Ever looked at the emotions of the fans? Maybe this was it for them, but not for me. Looking for it in perfect health. After a period of not having been well, I thought achieving perfect health was it. I became obsessed with healthy foods and supplements and didn't realize that I had created another trap connected to fear. This was not it, but at least living more healthy and aware would bring me some life quality. However, I saw others leading an even healthier lifestyle getting confronted with disease and I forgot that everybody had to die. There was more to it than I could see and kept on looking for it and creating a perfect balance, which unfortunately was not the solution as I constantly had to face new challenges who threw me off balance. Losing it through all my pains. Many times I was confronted with painful accidents and through the course of life sometimes sick like a dog. I ask, why me and why? Is there no fast and permanent solution? It didn't make any sense, felt not loved and abandoned. Later in life I realized that a lot was to be contributed to my lifestyle. The extreme things I did, the foods I drank, and I do not need to mention more. Why didn't anybody tell me? But on the other hand, I saw parents telling their kids about the shouldn'ts, instilling fear and asking for rebellion. It is a fine line what to do and not to do. And when you give anything power other than it, you end up giving all your power away. I made a choice not to restrict myself, but chose not to do and take certain things anymore. However, keeping in mind that there was no guarantee, and when I still ended up in bed with something severe, at those times I really lost it. Why all this pain? Looking for it by Sears. Since I was a child, I have always been looking for answers. Many were answered, but many not. Later in life, I went to astrologers and Sears, hope, hoping they would have answers about the unknown. Tomorrow, next year, my relationship, my projects and difficulties. The information received was just bits and pieces, or focused on one thing, which was surrounded by so many other things. Like me wanting to find out if I would pass an exam. Yes, I did. But that day was one of the most miserable days of the year. I had an accident, lost my motorbike, and was in a lot of pain. What was it? Really, I wanted to find out. Was it the fear for the unknown? Losing it through filling it all up. 
There was an emptiness inside of me and couldn't figure out what it was. And I didn't want to deal with it. Each time there was a pause or a break. Every evening just before falling asleep and after any event this emptiness showed up. As I didn't know what to do with it, I filled my life so it would not show. Falling asleep in front of the TV and during the day just keeping busy. It was similar with feeling alone and lonely, which I also didn't like. I needed noise around me and next to being busy with work, goals, deadlines, I used my best trained sense organ and kept on filling up through eating and drinking. Anything that could go in the mouth. I realized no matter what I did, I felt unfulfilled. So I filled it all up. This was a way to feel secure and could be in control, not having to deal with those things I didn't want to deal with. I had, however, my doubts, as I saw others doing this and gaining weight, and realized they were fed up with a lot more. Was this the solution, what I was doing? I didn't know it anymore. Looking for it at the movies. Everybody loved to watch heroes and seeing them do the impossible but mostly the violence was too dominant, which I saw having a very bad effect on me and anybody else. I cannot even recall how many movies I watched, but I always identified with the hero who I thought had it. Reading, however, about these actors' life, I became very fast aware that, that they didn't have it. Most of their life was just as much confusion and turmoil than others. However, I kept on watching movies anyway, for something reminded me that one day it could be it. It, however, was not about being famous or rich. It was much more, but I didn't know how to get it. Looking for it by being an artist. I always wanted to be different than others, even when I mingled in groups. I wanted to be recognized that I was different and that I had something others didn't have. It started at my parents' house where I rebelled and didn't want to be like them because in my eyes they didn't have it. I thought I could do it better and searched in every possible way to be it. I wanted to stand out and thought that an artist had it, but when I saw other artists struggling in life, I didn't want to be like them. I chose to become a therapist and writer, but realized that every time I was pushed and forcing, I was pushing and forcing and wanting to see results, that nothing happened. Every time I was in between, it didn't work. I heard others complaining about their writer's block or feeling creatively blocked and knew they didn't have it as well. There were also those times I wanted to fit into the norm, what everybody else was doing. The fashion, the music, the sports, the hangout places, and talking a certain way, which we called cool. I tried, but deep inside of me I didn't fit in anywhere or in any group. I saw how some of my friends got really trapped being a part of a group, which was not it. Looking for it by studying symbols. Somebody made me realize that there were deep hidden messages in symbols and thought that I could find it by studying them. I went everywhere and visited libraries and found books full of symbols and their messages was already written underneath. 
So I went on a quest and discovered that people in different arts got initiated through symbols and thought that was it. But when I saw the limited powers derived from it, I was disappointed. Nobody really had it and kept looking for the one who might have it. Later in life, I realized that there were teachers giving their followers a mantra, words that had a deeper meaning, a symbol of something higher in order to reach and enter different planes. I became careful, as I was already lost in the world, and I had had many teachers who all didn't have it. So who to believe and trust? and me imagining how lost I was within my own mind. On the other hand, I couldn't have any judgment on any of them, as I had not gone that path in order to find out if they had it. In those days, I was so confused that I left it again. Losing it by making the same mistakes. I tried everything in my life to have it. I ventured every path and possibility and each time when I got closer to it, having it, I saw myself making the same mistake over and over again, falling all the way back to the start. Everybody around me had to deal with the same thing, only their mistakes were different. I felt each time defeated and wished I could take them out or let somebody else take them out. My emotions overwhelmed me as they were so connected to that same mistake. I went for treatments like many others, but not too much changed. It was a strong pattern and realized that I couldn't get rid of it and just hope that it wouldn't come back. Looking for the perfect book. I was looking for it in the form of a perfect script in the theater of life, but didn't like to play certain roles I had to play. And I also didn't like certain situations in the past and in the moment. Basically, I had a hard time to accept my life and was looking for another script. But when I asked others, who I thought had it, they too were not satisfied with their life. They were also complaining and searching for another. I was angry and played out without realizing a victim. I was always ready to blame other people. You did this to me. You make me angry. I wondered who had written my book of life. I first thought my parents, who brought me in the world, wrote my book, but realized, believing this, I would be a victim of circumstances. As long as I could blame somebody, I would stay a victim. This was not an opinion, as I didn't want to be a victim, as I saw too many people doing this, and that was not it at all. There were two options left. Either me or God wrote the book. Both of them were okay, as the first option took away my pointing finger. There was nobody to blame. The second option was even better, because when it, referring to the all-knowing power, wrote my book, there was no mistake made. There was nothing to add or to subtract. And it was just me, guiding me through the chapters in the best way possible. However, in order to do this, I needed it and I needed to find it. I kept on falling, but at the same time I thought that I could tell others what to do so they could have a better script. They too had to go through their life. And who was I to think I had some answers for them? Mostly, they didn't even have a question, but I giving them an answer anyway. 
What in God's name was I thinking? Looking for it behind other masks. Mostly without even realized, I looked for it in many roles and characters, which I thought might bring or have it. Each time I put on a different mask, I identified too strong with it and had and had to do a lot to get out of it again. All these characters were connected to situations and most of the characters I played and their connected situations I didn't even like at all and wish that I could get rid of them, which I tried in many ways. I went for psychology, ran to psychics and drank to forget all about them. However, I loved fairy tales, the beauty and the beast, Snow White and the evil queen, the prince and the pauper, and there was something to it, but I didn't know exactly what. I tried it also through fashion and dressing different, and although I felt different each time, I wore something else, it was not it, and I could not hold on to it. Fashion changed fast and I got bored. Looking for it through education and professions. During my many years of study, I thought when I would finish and have a diploma, I would have it. Arriving at that point, I realized that the game just had started as I needed to get a profession. Again, I felt disappointed, but when I had a profession, then it would all come together. The illusion stroke again. And now I had to find a job. And I had my doubts that there would be any place I would work that would bring it. Nowhere there was peace, only struggle and ego fights. Everywhere I looked it was about positions, money and power and nobody seemed to have it all together. Looking for it in the gods. Not only I worship in the beginning of my life my father, my heroes and sports and idols on the screen, but I looked for it in food, power, money and possessions. I couldn't find it however in any of them, and decided to make my life as comfortable as possible. I walked around in the latest fashion, had the motorbikes and fancy cars. I lived in the most expensive places and my homes looked like little palaces with every item I needed to make my life easy. When I could afford it, I had even servants who cleaned the car and made the food. I had a TV, the Wi-Fi system and computers, and not to forget the cell phone with all the latest gadgets. I needed to look healthy and went to exercise. For pampering I went from massages and of course dental work and the hairdresser. I thought even for a while that this was it, but none of these things really brought that which I was looking for. Looking for it in books and religion. I looked into religion and philosophy and the teachings and awareness was inspiring, but I saw people getting too involved, getting too serious, playing power games and where the organization and rituals became more important than the real thing. It was not about the buildings and the ones talking, although they were all reminders. It was about something inside me. There was nothing to judge but the things around the core of the teachings and consciousness that was available was not for me. However, I felt not so alone anymore as I saw many people looking for it as well. Reading never had been my thing, but at one point in my life I scanned through a lot of books with the hope I could find it. I met so many people who had been reading 
one book on awareness, mysticism, spirituality after the other, and also going for seminars. Unfortunately, I didn't meet anybody who I thought had found it. It was already, I was already skeptical about people with book knowledge and hiding and hitting others over the head with the content of certain books. I saw just power coming from most of them, overpowering others with words and quotations and busy with instilling fear. I was not an easy follower of anything as I saw through their facade. Even teachings in books had gone through so many hands and it was buried deep inside. Death, was that it? I had seen people leaving the world. I heard them talking out their life story in a couple of hours. Was that it? Did they found it? Were they going to it? Was it believing in it? Or was it knowing and being it? I always had been somebody wanting to have evidence and didn't believe until convinced. Most people were afraid not knowing what was coming, who was prepared. We prepare for everything that might come in life, but don't prepare for that moment which will come. Just looking back at the time I had lived, where did the time went? What is the purpose of life? Was it getting a profession, working, eating, sleeping, having a family, or being successful? There should be something else to it. Looking for the solution, piecing the puzzle. Me and everybody else around me as well was always looking for that something that would take care of it all. Looking for that solution in the business that would make us instant rich or looking for that pill to stay young or to take care of the disease, but nobody found it. Because the real treasure was not to be found in this ever-changing world. Finding it would bring that peace and happiness we are all looking and searching for. This was the real quest. The quest for the cup that would bring everlasting life. It was the story of the man, the man of La Mancha, Don Quixote, and his impossible dream. It was and is possible, but not here. But still every generation, everybody was looking for it in parts and pieces of this transitory world. We are busy getting the pieces together of a broken mirror scattered all over the world, but forget that we are the scat scattered in our own mind. I thought I had most of the pieces together. I had been everywhere and had done so many things, and one day I was just looking for the last two pieces of the mirror. When I would be able to step into a permanent relationship and permanent job, the mirror would be one again. Through all my traveling, I had not been able to accomplish these last two things. My time to find it. One day something inside me woke up, or better said, it woke me up. I like to talk about it because this was it. It was my inner guide showing up. It was that I had been looking for all my life, and although I realized that it was connected to and in everything, as it was the essence of everything, when I looked for it in the world, I could not hold on to it. It was in everything that had two faces, constantly changing and bound to time, and for that reason, when I connected it to the physical experience of any guide, I could not hold on to it as well, for the physical form was not it. But it was inside my example, 
which I had been looking for because my teacher, guide, and master, shepherd, or any name I want to give it, not only had it, but was it. It was vibrating through his entire being. It guided me to find it inside myself, for it was the essence of me as well. It was that within me that was living forever. It was that peace. It was all that wisdom. It was the beginning and the end of everything. It were all these incredible qualities beyond human, as it was not human. It was it, once I only identified with it and was. It was it that created all, that took on a mind and body to experience creation, where unfortunately the sense organs and the negative passions took over, and through which I forgot that I was it. These were the last two pieces of my broken mirror which I had been looking for, but they turned out not to be from this plane. I was now in a permanent relationship with it, and I had a permanent job to stay in contact with it. Aren't we all looking for it? Part C. My adventure back to it. Did I waste my time looking for it? Quote, I have not failed. I have just found 10,000 ways that won't work. Thomas A. Edison. End of quote. Being with it again. Now that I knew that it really was inside me, I had to go this adventure to become it again. In order to do this, I needed it and turned into it all day long, for when I did not think of it, I was back in the world and lost it again. I had to learn to sit with it, alone in silence and just focus at it, to reunite with it and let this attraction overpower all my attachments belonging to the adventure in creation. I had to become it again, in order to continue my adventure living it from a different perspective and at the same time going home to be with it forever. Long time ago while playing, without even realizing, the sense organs and negative passions of egotism, attachment, fear, lust and greed had taken the seat. It had happened when I started to identify with the character and the world I had created and forgot to identify with it. But again, when I would have looked closer to me experience these negative passions, they too were trying to give me clues to wake up. Everything had been there trying to help me. In addition to having organized that I, the real it, disguised in the form of another being, would come to rescue me, I also realized that I have been smart by leaving a roadmap inside my life to find my real self again, like the breadcrumbs in the story of Hansel and Gretel. Everything that happened, happened for a reason. They were clues and directions and messages all guiding me back to my magical and mystical intent and adventure in creation and telling me to wake up, finding out who I really was and where I came from. Looking back at judgment, I had judged myself, others and situations in the world either by thinking or through words, like Caesar. I expressed my will with my thumb, what I liked or not, what should live or die. Who was I to judge anything created and sustained by it? Did I obey his will? Or was it that my will was more important? I had forgotten that everything had a purpose, but from my level of awareness 
I could not see it. It was for me to accept all and not even have an opinion about it or anything else. Looking back at attachments. I had created a web of attachments about things and people I liked, loved, disliked and hated. I had pointed with my index finger those things I wanted near and said no to the things I didn't approve of or didn't want to have near. Not realizing that they were of the same coin. I had wanted to free myself from some of these attachments by trying to detach myself from them. There had been times in my life that I freed myself from almost all obligations and lived in a secluded life. However, realizing that I had created a kind of freedom, but there were so many basic needs left, plus I was not free from me, connected to a body and mind. How strong did I think I was? I was not able to break the most simple habits. The only way to get out of the web was finding it, which was an attachment not from the world of duality. It was the only real solution, solution to get me out of my self-created web. Looking back at fear. My fear for heights had been a reflection of the heights I could reach inside of me. But as I didn't have anybody explaining this to me, I stayed down in the dungeons. Darkness had been. Me afraid of my dark side, which actually was everything other than being my real and true self, which was it that my mind feared. My mind was like snakes, keeping me down in creation, poisoning me, and the dragons were my mind, protecting the door to find it again. All of them had been there to guide me, but all in those days I didn't have my guide active in consciousness in my life. Everybody had these fears or more, like being afraid of spiders, but they all had a purpose like realizing that we were the spiders creating our web of attachment in life and being captured in that web. I also realized that getting angry had been many times a result of fear, not being able to digest the situation. How many times I had seen it, looking at my parents trying to play the one-minute manager and when things didn't win according to their expectations, and not instantly, they got mad, just like I did later in my life. How was it possible to digest situations when everything went too fast, when too much was going on at the same time, making things even more complicated? It was guiding me to simplicity and training me to practice patience. Emotions never were an easy challenge, because at those days I didn't realize they were experiences on their own. Joy, anger, fear, happiness, depression, but me connecting them to faces, places and events and getting wrapped up in them. I am happy because the sun is shining. What was I doing by giving my happiness to the sun? Would I not be happy because the sun was not shining? I'm angry at you. Now I realize that the anger is inside me and I gave all my power away by pointing and blaming. It is great to know to just accept emotions and that there is no need to connect them at all. Looking for solutions and dealing with difficult situations and not having your emotions involved makes it all much easier. This was another trap for the mind because as long as I connect my emotions to people, places and events, I create an action that will have a reaction and what goes around 
must come around. This was a part of creating my own web and keeping me away from it. Looking back at anger. Anger had been a great teacher to not point at others, but claiming that that anger was inside me. As I understood that it was merely an emotion, an experience in the adventure of life, I also didn't have to identify with that emotions, as emotions were from this world. It was just something to experience, and that was all. Anger had mostly been a cop-out, as I was unable to handle situations, and anger had been the outlet. Looking back, doing so much in life, trying to do too many things at the same time, and that in a high speed, it was clear that I couldn't digest any situation and had become angry. Looking back at lust. Looking back at lust, which was a result of living a total unbalanced and unsatisfied life, a life in which I had lost the magic and playfulness. The commitments I had made were not made from my heart and were depressing me and lust had been an outlet which didn't work. Now I was committed to something greater, something I really, I really wanted and the rest in life was now done with and in moderation. It had changed me but didn't had any illusion that I was completely rid of these negative passions because as long the mind and the sense organs could trick me, these negative passions could surface. I only would be safe when I had totally merged back into it. Looking back at greed and control. Holding on to anything of the world had been confirming my fear that I didn't have it. It was the essence of all things and people, but people were destined to die. I could have seen my being desperate to wanting it so badly, and why did I even try to control that which was controlling me? It was inside all the things, part of the cycle of coming and going. I could have looked at everything as a momentary gift. I had come without anything and would go without anything and could have practiced selflessness. I could have looked at nature, how it always gave unconditionally, for it was inside all that was serving me. I could have started to serve from that same source everything around me. Now I realized that there was more satisf satisfaction in giving than in receiving, and that anything I gave was not mine, as it belonged to it. And although I was it too, I needed to get first back to that level to be able to say, it is all mine. The past was the past, but from now on, I could do things different. Looking back at love and relationships. In my new awareness, I look back at my life and figured out that when I was looking for it in my relationships with people and things, that they all had been there trying to remind me of it, and that I had to search somewhere else. In creation there was no perfect partner and no law forever. I had to look on the inside where I had to reconnect with it. That was the real love story, me merging back into it, like the stories where the two lived happily ever after. All the fairy tale love stories were reminders as well. Think about the magic of the princess in Snow White and Shrek, who came to rescue, after which they went to live forever. Although it was in everything and everybody, 
as it was the essence of all, it was not possible to hold on to it in the relationships in this world as the things in creation were bound to change or meant to disappear, they were only allotted a certain time on stage. Looking back at my family situations. Thinking back about the families I knew, they were all dysfunctional, for they had nothing in common with the real family of love who had it. The one we all came from. From another perspective, all these people were reflections from within myself, which I had to make peace with. I also could have realized that I had come on my own and had to go on my own. Nobody belonged to anybody, and I just came through them, spending time on the stage of life for a while. In the beginning, most children were adored as they came as close as you can get having it, as they had saint-like qualities. They were there to remind the parents of it, but as they grew up, it was all lost again. Looking back at my travels, this longing for traveling away from where I lived could have been the reminder that I was already on vacation vacation destination planet earth and that there was this intense longing to go back to it why didn't i remind myself more often that i had come one day and that i would go one day why did i acted like a pharaoh thinking that i could things with me after death yes my memories thoughts dreams and wishes but maybe I needed to come back for them, to outlive them, or I left them behind for my children, for them to outlive them. I had come as a soul to experience creation, but got lost, stayed and looked for security in a world that constantly changed. I lost the real adventurer, who had it, but wanted to hold on and secure the same tastes and feelings over and over again. We got all conditioned and addicted to habits and lost the real longing for adventure. Basically, we got stranded like Robison Cruz and needed now to be rescued in order to travel back to it again. Again, realizing that there was nothing I could back, I could take back to it as it had already everything to be at peace, content and happy with itself. Looking back at special events, I look back and realize that so many special things had happened in my life and that I was special as well. There was nobody in the entire world that had exactly my experience. Many things happened when I was not looking for them things that happened spontaneous. The most special event had been that I had been woken up and received direction to become it again. This had been the real treasure in my life, a treasure where nobody was looking for, being aware of it or not. Looking back at sports, Looking back at the greatest things that happened when performing in sports, it happened when my mind was not there. It all just happened by itself, without any effort. I remembered that this was also my first experiences in any sports, which was called by others beginner's luck, or getting all these comments. Look how good you are without training. You are a natural. Then me getting my ego involved and training like a madman and losing it completely. It became more a battlefield where we all tried to, de to defeat the enemy. Why didn't I just enjoy those moments, saying thank you and moving on to the next adventure to experience it? 
When I became too serious and rigid, and wanting results, the magic of it was gone. The enemies I tried to defeat in sports were just characters within myself, those which I didn't like, wanted to conquer or get rid of. It was reminding me that I could not get rid of my other side, as both were a part of the same coin called duality. To do this I needed to go beyond the world of mind and duality. The mind was the enemy or entity ruled by the sense organs which was running my life, and this was absolutely not it. Most sports also could have been a reminder to get me back to my inner center, to meditate like the baseline in tennis, the timeouts and the training sessions before going into a match. In order to live a balanced life on the outside, in the world, we need a strong base to do so. It is the center of our life and we need to stay as much centered as possible in order not to lose it. Looking back at health and fitness. Looking for perfect health had been another illusion, but through trial and error at least I found that I could be vital till my last breath. Vitality was from another level, which even a sick person could have. It was a state of being, knowing what to do or having the awareness to look at any situation from a different perspective. Health, you could have one minute and the next minute you were confronted with something. Through my obsession, at least, I had more knowledge what I could do with myself when confronted with disease, but more important was that I felt an obligation to keep my body as vital and fit as possible, because it was residing inside. Looking back at all my pains. Looking back at all my pains and sick days, I realized that they had been trying to tell me something. They had been messages of a body and mind out of balance, cells crying for help. Most of us do not want to deal with them and others need to take care of the problem. We don't want to take responsibility and become actually victims of circumstances. We blame it on inheritance, viruses, bacteria and others who gave that illness to me. As it had created the universal mind, Everything was created inside. There was nothing coming from the outside. Everything was inside reflecting itself outside and realized that every disease memory was also stored in every cell of my body. Possibly triggered by things on the outside, but everything and anything could not happen when it was not already inside us. Everything that had happened had been a profound message, and I learned to decode these messages. They were practical messages, at the same time messages on a universal level and deeper. The most important was that the origin of all pain was me feeling separated from it. Every pain, accident or illness was a reminder of it inside of me which longed to be one with it again. Looking back at seers. Life in creation wouldn't be an adventure when I knew what was coming, although when I would reach the level being one with it, I could see everything. I realized going to astrologers and seers that they could only see a fraction more than me at that time. I saw this all a part of being busy in life. My way of filling up, and at times they helped me, but not in the sense that I wanted to know the future. They confirmed what I was going through and feeling at those times. Getting too involved in the things the seer saw, I left early behind me, as one could get trapped in just hoping, waiting, and anticipating. 
also realizing that the words they use and the things they saw could happen in different ways. Like hearing the word death. Death comes in so many ways, the death of a person, leaving behind an old dominating character within me, the death of a car or other possession, losing one's job. Feeling closer to it, took care of all of this wanting to know. Being busy with it, the things in life didn't matter so much as it brought a strength, being able to deal with life better. Looking back at how I filled it all up. Looking back at the times I felt empty, unfulfilled, alone and lonely. What great moments and blessings in disguise they had been. Why had I not embraced these moments and times? Probably in those days I was still looking for it on the outside. I had not been able to enjoy my own company and had been afraid of the stillness. Had I not been looking for a moment of rest and peace? It had always been trying to remind me that I was not from here. Now I welcomed these moments and stayed with it as long as I could, until the things on the outside asked for my attention. I knew that one day I could just stay and be with it again, and although giving it all my effort, I had to wait till that pull from it became the dominant attraction. There was no need to keep on filling me up with the things of the world, as they would just sidetrack me from finding it. This was it, what I felt that had been missing in my entire life. Looking back at the movie, not being satisfied with my own movie, although I couldn't appreciate it, I had gone to the movies. All the movies I watched during my life had been trying to remind me that none of them was the ultimate one. I had to accept my movie first, because in that one I would be starting my journey home again. How could I start my journey not wanting to be where I was? I was in the past or in the future, or racing through the moments. As a hero, one needed to be focused, like Will and Tell, Robin Hood, the Jedi, or Mulan. And this one, this is one of the major aspects my guide came to teach me. Meditation and silent prayer had to be done with a one-pointed focus in order to contact it. And this needed to reflect in all aspects of life. Otherwise, I would be just scared. My entire life had been a movie which I had directed and became a hero in or in some areas of life. I realized that a hero was a hero in all aspects of life and was fighting for freedom, but the freedom I was looking for was not possible in this world. I had to get out of the matrix. I was happy for my guide, who was free and coaching me to get it as well. Looking back at me being an artist, how much effort I had put into wanting to be recognized, being different from the others, now realizing that I was totally unique as a human being as there was no other one like me. Why all the rebellion at my parents at home making a point that I was not like them, although I inherited a lot? From another angle, I had to admit that in essence, I was the same as everybody and everything, and all connected to it. Looking back at my attempts wanting to be an artist was also funny. In order to call myself an artist, had had nothing to do with my skills as a writer or therapist. And this was for another person wanting to be recognized as an artist as well, in any other field. 
A real artist is not someone called or recognized by others as one, but an artist is someone who is creative in all aspects of life. An artist of life. Thinking that I had it being skilled in one area was far away from having it. The first step was to be creative and learning to go with the flow in all life situations. It was being open to let it flow through me and with it being the life force, which is the creative force. Having it has nothing to do with the ego, nor with money or being recognized by others. Looking back, me trying to fit in the norm or groups which never worked was a clear picture that I was not from here and I was happy that I didn't got trapped in the false securities of that reality. Looking back at studying symbols. Symbols were definitely powerful tools and I was happy that I stopped searching for I had to wait until it found me. When that happened, there was no doubt. I knew my guide had it and knew that I could get it too. Symbols, yes, symbols, my entire life. I had been guided by symbols, but not in the way I had expected. Everything that happened in my life had been a symbolic message trying to guide me back to my magical and mystical intended adventure as it. All the things I had seen as struggle and even sickness had been symbolic messages ready to be coded and followed. Just to share a simple one, me having a problem with my legs. My legs symbolically stand how I stand and walk in life. Those pains guided me to stand and walk differently in life. The problem I had with my hand, symbolically expressing that I was not handling life very well. It was always there trying to assist me, but I was looking in the other direction. Looking back at my mistakes. How mad I had been every time I made in my eyes the same mistakes again. First of all, now realizing that you cannot make exactly the same mistake twice, as there are not even two moments the same, but they had been feeling as if I was making the same mistake over and over again in my life. Like anybody else, I had been hard on myself with these when these situations occurred. Now I realized that they had been my checkpoints and road signs. I mean to say that during my entire life, I had the possibility to see how I was growing in these situations, for without them, I could not check if I was doing better. Looking back, I learned to deal much better with them, and it had been a gift having them. I wish that I had realized earlier, which could have saved me from a lot of heartache. Also realizing that I learned to separate my emotion, no charge, to these mistakes, which helped a lot. Emotions were experiences by themselves, and that there was no need to connect them to anything or anybody. Looking back at a perfect book. Looking back at everything that happened in my book, I realized why not many people claimed that they themselves or God had written their book. Claiming this was to stop with complaining, pointing and blaming. Who wants to take responsibility? My book was the perfect book to get me home. It was not for any worldly name or fame, not even benefits. It was only interested about the real me. How much energy I wasted in finding other scripts or trying to force things out of mine. 
Why didn't I just accept everything and used my energy to adapt to situations and staying connected to it? Being an observer and not getting involved in the chapters, sentences and words. I had to go through this book no matter what, with a cry or laugh, resisting or going with the flow. In this script I had also written my escape, and it was just a matter of time, and then again time didn't matter, as it has no time. I had written a lot of strange things in this book, and although I cannot use any justification for the things I did, but they were written, and I had to make peace and find the peace. As long as I was bound to the mind and not directing the mind from the level of it, which was free, I was still trapped. Looking back at my masks, now I realized that I had endless roles and characters within me which I could play with on the stage of life. Mardi Gras was a reminder of the endless game where we dress up and put different masks on. This celebration was a reminder of it being behind all these masks we put on in creation. After Mardi Gras came the time of fasting, or in other words, taking off these masks and hopefully discovering who we truly are. Throwing off our garments and masks was followed by the resurrection at Easter, reminding us that we are not the masks and garments, but that we are it. One day the time would come to leave them all behind and having a rebirth in order to live forever without having to deal with the body, the mind and all its characters. It was just a matter of time and the last would be the first and the first the last. This all didn't matter as it has no time. For me in the meantime, it was not to identify with any of the masks and just imagining that it was just experiencing creation through all these masks. Looking back at the gods, I worshipped many false gods and idols. Instead of worshipping the one and the only one and leave it at that, I had worshipped people food and money, now realizing that these gods also were inside of me, living in the energy centers of my body. In certain countries they had even names for them, having a specific characteristic coming from the mind and working through these energy centers. The god of my will be done, the ego, the god within my heart that loves the things of this world and gets attached to them, the god of fear, which I bite into, the god of lust and the god of power and possessions. Everything that pulled me down into the creation was like a god, but a lower god, but none of them had it. What I had done was just dressing up my jail to make my life as comfortable as possible, a foolish game. But I had no way to rescue myself out of this jail or web. I got myself into. I just had to wait, like in all the fairy tales, to be rescued by the one who had it. Only it, which is free, can rescue another who is captivated. The blind cannot lead the blind. Looking back at books and religion. Reading and hearing about the great teachers and masters in history, they had all something in common. They themselves never read too much or nothing at all, but got it from experience within and mostly others much later in time wrote their teaching down. Something else was clear to me. They must have been a guide as well. 
if that was documented or not. So it was definitely something already inside and the written word was just a reminder. When the time came that I met my teacher, guide and master, or better said, when he found me and put me on the path back to it, I didn't have any doubts that he was it. I was happy in a way not to have fallen into the hands of God knows what. Now I had the perfect example who had it, and I needed to find it in me. At the core, all religions and philosophies had it, and it pointed that it was inside the human body temple. The mind and body was a vast universe in which I was trapped in, but at the same time, the body and mind were the vehicles to get me to it. This had been the real purpose of my birth, getting me home again. Looking back at death, the real purpose of life was to find it and to merge back into it. Now I needed to die from this world, but not in a physical sense. I needed to die in order to find it, which was everlasting life. This was a process, as in order to return home, I had to leave everything behind, my body, mind and every memory inside. I knew I could assist as much as possible, but it needed to help me. Through meditation and silent prayer, I needed to get in contact with it, and that attraction would be greater than all the things connected to the creation. Was this really it? I couldn't place any judgment on it, but I believed, and now it was up to me to prove it to myself that it was it. From that day on, I needed to stay awake and aware and prepare myself for the day that my mind and body could be left behind, and I knew that I needed to have the right address when that moment would come. Looking back at looking for the solution. All of us, knowing it or not, are on this quest to find it but we look for the things and solutions in the mortal world. We look for instant gratification, which, in regards to wanting it, is a gradual and slow process. How can something, having been in the darkness for so long, get used to the light instantly? It would knock us out, and again, we could not hold on to it. We are so used to instant reward. Just think about deciding to stand up. One second later, you find yourself standing up. You have money and you can get something instantly. You press the remote control and there is your channel. First of all, to get in touch with it is a gift. And this is not because of us, but in spite of us. Secondly, it is a lifelong struggle to keep in touch with it, as we are trained to let all our energy run out into this world. So in essence, we are all still a complete mirror, but in the mortal world it looks like a broken one, but even here the mirror is complete. We only look with the wrong eyes, because looking from the level of our soul, it is complete. Looking back at education and profession. Looking back and watching the foolish game, which actually just was meant to make some money to support the basic needs of life, I realized that everybody wanted to be the king and having the power. As long as that was not happening, I forced and pushed to get there, or undermined and rebelled. We had created a model world with lots of opportunities, but had traded and lost the basics, how to live in harmony with ourselves and nature. The real education was for me to find out who I was, and when I would put the same time and effort in 
which I did put into my schooling and profession, into my new goal, I would be on the right track. Living with it forever. Guided, I was now living a life forever, as it inside of me would never die. And while waiting till this body and mind cease to exist, I traveled back and forth on the currents of light and sound with my guide, which was the way to travel. I felt protected, as the realms and planes inside would be even more attractive than the planet Earth, which I had been trapped in. There was a lot of danger through these beautiful attractions, but my guide wouldn't give me a chance to get trapped again. Only when I had reached home and merged with it, and with my guide, which also had been me, I would be free. At the same time, I realized that this rescuing had been going on since I had created the entire creation. All of us, once home, would realize that we were it, and that we were also the guide. You, my mask, how long would this creation exist? Possibly creation would exist as long as there was one positive thought which makes sense, as this is the balance in the world of duality. The power of one positive thought was more powerful than all the negative ones, for that one positive had created it all and sustained it all. When the creation one day would be finished, water would overflow the earth, fire would dry the water, air would consume fire and ether would swallow the air. Ether would cease to exist and all the family members would return home. It would just be, again, the only thing without anything else. Was it about getting those home who were such called good people first? Or was it getting those home who really made a mess out of this adventure? Those who needed more help? No, it was the first who would be the last and the last who would be first. It doesn't judge anybody and doesn't look at people's shortcoming. It only looks at the potential inside everyone, which is it. It knows that life and creation is just an illusion or dream, and that there is nothing real. However, to understand how it all works, we need it to become it. Only on that level we will understand. And don't you forget, you are it too. Just look for it, or forget about it. It will find you anyway. It wants you too, for there we can truly enjoy it and live forever with it.